So good evening to all our mentorship traders, 4th of December, 2020, 9 p.m. Friday evening. Uh, warm welcome to all our new community members who have joined over the last week. We're going to talk about the index, Van Nifty, and a few sectors in the first 10 to 15 minutes. And then we're going to go and take a look at your trades, your doubts, um, and your queries. Um, this is the daily chart of Nifty. I'm using Trading View. And um, last week, um, while uploading the video, the uh, weekly analysis on YouTube, I I, I tagged um, as sure signs of slowdown. And we did get these clear cut signs of slowdown um, on few sectors. And looking at the way the market moved this week, you know, uh, a very um, uh, unique um, um, line of uh, there used to be this uh, this movie called uh, Divana Mastana. It was a Govinda, Anil Kapoor, Juhi Chawla kind of a slapstick comedy kind of a movie. I think it was directed by David Dhawan, if I'm not mistaken. And in that uh, in that video in, in that movie there was a there was an um, uh, there was a line by Govinda saying that hata uh, sawan ki ghata khat ho jaye and he goes on. If you have not watched it, don't watch the movie. It's it's I don't think it's worth it. But you can watch this part on YouTube. And uh, looking at the move that I saw this week, uh, as if the Nifty is trying to tell us uh, the especially to the divergences that shaped up that. And I'm just going to go up. I don't care about what kind of negative divergences and whichever indicator you're making, I don't give a damn. Uh, that was a kind of probably the language that Nifty and the other sectors, a few metal stocks like Tata Steel was definitely throwing. Nevertheless, the um, um, the irony is even after this close, even after We've got a pretty good uh, weekly gain. We still have distinct signs of divergence. Um, one thing is that this move has taken us around close to 15 and a half percent with one bearish engulfing pattern, one, one and a half days of short term uh, selling that we had seen, but 15 and a half percent move from a low to high basis, which is more or less in line with the recent one, one way movement. One thing that uh, Catches my eye, 13,375, 13,400 being a Fibonacci target from this sell-off extending further up. Uh, this should should be the, if I'm not mistaken, the 261. Yes, this is the 261.8% of this sell-off extended further up. So it's got a target, but um, with the target, we've got, again, the divergence persists. In the weekly charts, we have been talking about the multiple uh, channels and how the channel top can give us some resistances. Well, nothing like that. Uh, it's a clean breakout. And any throwback, any chance of a correction would probably find support from this zone. Strong, strong uh, uptrend. You can see from the monthly charts the way the index has bounced back. Uh, is as sharp as probably the way it came down. Um, strong market, no doubt. Daily charts coming close to FIB, that's that's all right. The divergences are still intact, that's also all right. Now let's, if you closely look into the movement from the lows of 30th of October, once 13 November on a day-to-day -day basis, the low was uh, broken, that was at the opening, so it's better we don't count it. The first time it was 19 November that on a day to day basis, the low was broken. The market bounced back again in three days and then on 25th of November. After that, the low of the day has not been reached. I uh, would continue to look at successive lower highs, lower lows only what uh, twice we have had here. Once, twice we've had here. Um, it's a sign of a clear, strong uptrend. And for me, the first trigger would be the break of previous bars low, number one. And then the next successing, successive bars may be lower high, lower low, if at all. But till that point of time, this, 
trend is strong, the trend, trend is resilient, the support from multiple sectors are very much intact, and the party is on. I would continue to stay very light on uh, equity as an asset class. I don't think that this is the right uh, time and price to add on to equity investments. One should go light, be a little dynamic in nature, and look to get into equity again at a lower level. Is is what my experience suggests me to do, and I would do like that. But in terms of levels, if you look at the 75-minute uh, chart of the Nifty, we had this channel breakout. So any drop. Now let's talk talk about micro levels. So if you're looking at Monday, Tuesday kind of uh, supports, then it is close to that 13,150, 13,000. 200 level as the short term supports uh, on the upside as i told you 13375 or 13400 acts as the um, resistance only a break of previous days low and uh, sustenance of that break will can lead to some amount of weakness but keep in mind i would also keeping this in mind that the divergence on the nifty daily is still intact now Coming to the signs of uh, weakness, sheer short signs of weakness that we saw on Bank Nifty last week, uh, we've got a big move today. We've got a pretty sharp move today coming in, uh, which kind of uh, distorts the rising wedge to a lot of extent. We had this intermediate divergence. We have this intermediate divergence. Let me check. We have a, okay. So we have an immediate and an intermediate divergence on the uh, Bank Nifty daily, which means what? which means again, today's low on the bank Nifty is uh, 29,350. Until now, this is breached, the markets are not in no mood to, to come down. On the other hand, if it continues to extend further up, you can take a look at the weekly charts where this red channel can act as a source of resistance, which is uh, the 30K has been very well taken care of, so it can extend further up towards that uh, 31K now upside. There's no sign of such divergences on the weekly for the bank nifty and it seems like today's move was pretty interesting you know i was expecting the bank nifty financial services to be weak this week uh, which was there at the initial uh, part but then it picked up towards the later end amongst the uh, sectors in today's trade was primarily led by bank nifty and the private banks i would like to show you this distinct uh, difference between the behavior of the PSU banks and the private banks. Uh, <clears throat> let me analyze this with the help of the weekly charts. It will give us a lot of uh, clarity. So this is where your bank nifty lies right now. Okay, it's got some uh, percentages of its all-time highs. Remember, the index nifty benchmark is at an all-time high. And this has been supported well by the private sector banks. Private and bank nifty charts are almost very, very similar. That's primarily because of the private sector banks having the highest weightage. Now, if you look at the PSU banks, you get the picture, right? That it is doing good, but it's it's no way close to a true representation of how the overall banking stocks have done in the stock market. I'm not talking about performance as a company, but stock performance now this movement is primarily because of state bank of india i will take a look at state bank of india if time permits us but i would suggest don't invest and get into psu banks at all okay state bank of india makes the maximum sense and then we have some a movement coming in from fmcg now many sectors are teasing their previous um, highs and are on the verge of moving into a life hike FMCG is one of them. We got some movement from ITC and Hindustan Unilever. Hindustan Unilever is pretty dull. ITC is an under, is a downtrending stock bouncing back. We're showing good strength. Stretched by no means. Of course, it is stretched. It is at resistances. So even if it slows down, one should not be surprised. Thanks to Sun Pharma, we've got some good move coming in from the CNX Pharma this week. Now, if you turn it into a line chart. <coughs> you will start to see some clear-cut intermediate divergences, no doubt. There is no doubt in anyone's mind, any technical trader's mind, there are clear-cut signs of these divergences shaping up. Now, these divergences, that does not necessarily mean the market will come down. So I feel pharma will continue to do good, even in this kind of a setup. 
real estate is primarily dlf heavy and um, i think that it's kind of really stretched but i don't have any divergences on the weekly nothing on the daily and it will probably continue to stretch further up metals exceptionally strong thanks to tata steel the way it has moved but the cnx metal index is now it needs to deal with some serious resistances you can see this gray, this gray band which is the highs of march 17 lows of july 18 highs of december 18 and april 19 and now you're back to that level this level is also confluence with the 61.8 fibonacci retracement of this big sell off this big sell off is from jan 18 to march 20 so 61.8 fibonacci retracement confluences with this um, with this zone which has earlier acted really well as uh, resistances and supports multiple times so metal i think if you're holding tata steel kind of stocks which have rallied a lot please protect your open profits um finance like the private banks and bank nifty and the fmcg inching very very close to its life highs. you have the bajaj finserve and bajaj finance supporting this index extremely well no signs of divergences on the weekly no signs of divergences i believe there is an intermediate divergence indeed um in fact that was clear in stocks like bajaj finance and bajaj finserv um so if this and the private sector bank both slows down then that can have some impact on bank nifty next week auto <clears throat> on a roll just um, extending further up this guy needs to you know uh, perform far more to come close to his life high because of the sheer size of the correction that auto had gone through since uh, jan 18 so you need to understand that from jan 18 18 19 the auto the metals they both started to correct way before the index correct index started to correct in jan 20 and these guys corrected from jan 18 so we are we are looking at a sector which has a lot to recover back i have this gray uh, line over here which acts as will hopefully act as good source of resistance but considering the wave vertical movement it has given you for five weeks and it's going to deal with the december 18 highs let's see uh, how it behaves it tricky i would use the word tricky it has created divergences enforces tcs kind of stocks are dragging itself the best thing is got some beautiful relative strength which means that any meaningful drop in price are opportunities to buy we've got a breakout here the symmetrical triangle or the pennant breakout um we'll see how it deals with 22600 primarily this will come because of enforces small cap is on a roll but small cap needs to also deal with some uh, serious resistances like metals mid cap much better than how small cap has performed but look at this move one two three four five five week gains vertical so uh, interesting media is not worth talking about an energy at life i got a nice move but reliance um is not looking that good if you look at reliance we've got a beautiful weekly correction we've got a correction on the weekly charts but if you look at the daily chart um stock has not performed uh with the markets with the market reaching a new high this stock is significantly off its new high so it is no more to contribute the way it used to before i have this uh, wide band of 2080 to 180 this is where there was a cluster of price and recent resistances um i have been saying that wait out a little bit i would like to see a break of 1850 honestly on the downside which can give us a better price to enter but let's see on my right this is the top 15 stocks that matter to the markets uh hdfc and hdfc bank hdfc bank um and hdfc are two stocks which have at least given some amount of uh, correction if you look at hdfc we have a one leg of correction we'll have the same thing on hdfc bank as well so it will be interesting to see that if the market comes up then i expect these two stocks also to correct maruti has given a huge breakout so it should consolidate buy on a dip for swing long traders uh, i did tell you that there was some momentum in hindustan unilever but 
don't don't trade this stock it's it's it lacks the kind of movement that it used to give before infosys and tcs i i discussed and i told you that it's just dragging slowly 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 itself up this leads to an adam and eve kind of a double bottom kind of double top double bottom kind of a pattern where one top is like a v and the other top is like a u this is called an adam and eve double top uh, will this be an adam and eve double top that time will tell us but it's not giving us any fireworks so you see the same thing in uh, in the daily chart of tcs as well not no explosion of course no because look from here from june then july then a bit of september an amazing one in uh, early october we got some real sharp moves and so it's kind of i would say tired what can we say tata steel exceptional stock exceptional support to the metals uh, literally 90 percent move 90 degree move i'm sorry and it's dealing with september and may 2018 highs to sum it up, you know, uh, quickly, I would say that I am, I'll probably use the word uncomfortable. I am uncomfortable to uh, be equity heavy at this price at this time. Um, I'm not saying that we are looking at a huge correction of the market has stopped out. I don't think so. Markets are definitely well poised to rally further. Um, but I'm uncomfortable to um, stay heavily invested in equity at these levels and would be very happy and waiting patiently to get back at lower levels. So I don't want to sound bearish considering the markets are shrugging off all signs of divergences. Um, but yes, I continue to stay a little uh, uncomfortable with an equity heavy portfolio at this juncture. I would rather strategically suggest to Protect your profits, book profits of the table. You've got an amazing move. Uh, the year is coming to an end, at least the calendar year is coming to an end. Uh, December towards the end is generally a sluggish uh, week. We'll talk about it later in our weekly sessions. So why not? You should book your profits and experience. And of course, you'll get a chance to uh, add further back at lower levels. If possible, go a little bit, add on a little bit debt to your portfolio at this time. Right. So let's now move ahead. Like always, we'll quickly discuss uh, the chart to play the week and uh, the queries that you might have.